Hi, welcome back to the survival guide in mathematics. Uh, last time we discussed powers, how they work and how we might benefit from using them. And today I thought we might look at one example, a more concrete example, how we can use them. More specifically, we'll have a look at an, an example where we use powers to compute compound interest, that is the interest rate that accumulates over time in a bank, for example. So, let's say I've just been paid, I got my salary, and I have 100 kroner here. Oh, that's Greta Garbo. Hmm, moving on. Uh, so I go into the bank office and I tell them, please, can I deposit my 100 kroner? And what happens? Well, they will, they will probably laugh at you uh, because this is a non-cash office. Never mind, let's assume it is. They do accept your money here, so I go in there and I deposit my money. So this will be in year zero. Right, uh, so then I deposit 100 krona in the bank. And also, to my great joy, they say, oh, we will give you an interest rate of 5% annually. Okay, that's very good. 5% annual interest. So, over a year, I will earn 100, uh, sorry, I will get 5% in interest payments. So, then I come back one year later, so now we are at year one, and how much money do I then have in my bank account? Well, providing no one has robbed the bank, I hope so, then I will still have my 100 kroner, right? Because that's what I deposited uh, one year ago, and then I will have the interest payments from the bank into my account as well. So plus, and then I have my 100, which is then multiplied by 5%, times 5 divided by 100. Uh, so, so this is, this corresponds to 5%, right? Uh, so 100 plus, and this is 0 0.05 times 100, that should be 5, right? So we can rewrite this in the following way. It's going to be, uh, we can factor out 100, because 100 here and 100 there. So we factor the 100 out. So 100 times, and then we have these round brackets. Then there will be 1 here, plus 5 divided by 100. So this is equal to 100 times 1 plus 0 0.05, that is equal to 100 times 1.05, and this is equal to 105 kroner. So I came in year 0 and deposited 100. After one year, I still have the 100 plus the interest payments, and so now I have 105 kroner. And we can see that this thing here, this is what I multiplied my capital with. So this is called the growth factor. So it's by this much my money grows every year. Okay, let's now assume I keep my money in the bank for another year. So now we will move down to year two. So how much money will I then have? Well, I know I will have this unless the bank has been robbed. This is from last year, right? So we will start by that. 100 times 1.05. So this is the starting capital when year two started. And so that means that, okay, this money will also grow. So we multiply this with the growth factor, 1.05. So to, to make it clearer, this is 
from year one. Okay, uh, let's now assume we keep the money here for yet another year. So now we end up in year three. So how much money will I then have? Well, I will have the money that I got in year two, right? And that is this sum here. So it is 100 times 1.05 times 1.05. This is from year two. But then, of course, the money has been growing at a 5% rate during year three. So we have to multiply this by the growth factor again. Okay. So um, now that we know how my money grows, and now that we know from last lecture how powers work, we can see that, okay, here's the capital I started with. This is, um, this is the growth factor, growth factor, growth factor. This is, hmm, this looks like a base, right? Base, base, base. A factor that appears three times, so we can write this in a much more convenient way. 100 times 1.05 to the power of three. Right, so we see the pattern developing here, right? And we can generalize this a bit more. Uh, so, if we say that the capital you start with, the, the amount of money you walk into the bank at year zero, that is k, that's the original amount, and then to be able to solve a problem like this, we also need to know the interest rate, which was p, that is the interest rate, In percent and finally we need to know for how many years has the money been remaining in the account so T that's the uh, the amount of whole years for how many years the money has been in the account and so there's a general formula we can use for this and it is the following so the amount you will have in the bank Amount after t years, that will be equal to k, that's the starting amount, right? And then we can do this, 1 plus p divided by 100 to the power of t. So going back to my example, the k was 100, right? Then the p was zero uh, was five, and then divided by one hundred. So you can see that one plus zero point zero five is one point zero five. That's the growth factor, the base year, and the amount of years is t. So you can see that this is a very useful formula to know when you need to com compute compound interest. So um, if you remember from last time, we discussed the the property of power is that uh, what we, we know that a to the power of zero was equal to one. And we ask ourselves, why is this reasonable? It looks a bit weird, right? So let's apply that to this rule. So what would it mean in this case? What if t equals zero? Well, how much money would you have? Well, that would be, let's use the formula, k times 1 plus p over 100 to the power of 0. That is equal to, now we know that this thing here is going to be 1. So it's just going to be k. So intuitively, that means that in year zero, when I walked into the bank, I had 100 kroner, and that was the K, and I was thus, when we apply the formula, we see that, yes, it will be just 100 kroner. So here, I think you can see that the rule that 
a to the power of 0 is equal to 1, and in this case, the base, that's 1.05 to the power of 0 is 1, it makes sense here, because that is the amount of money that I started with. Thank you very much, and bye.